Seth, why are black holes such an important part of modern physics where it becomes like a laboratory, even though we can never get to them, approach them in reality, but it becomes such a, an important laboratory for discerning physical laws? Yeah, black holes are things that are so dense that light, when it falls in, can't escape. But classically, nothing can escape. Stephen Hawking figured out quantum mechanically, maybe stuff can escape. But black holes represent, in some sense, the extreme of gravitational physics. Um, uh, they curve space-time so much that the ordinary behavior of light and matter uh, becomes extremely extraordinary. Moreover, at the center of a black hole is what's called a singularity. It's a place where the gravitational fields are so strong that all the known laws of physics break down. So trying to contemplate a black hole is like contemplating the edge of the universe. What specifically? What are the, some of the specific questions we can ask about black holes? Stephen Hawking showed that black holes are not entirely black. They're kind of gray because of quantum mechanical tunneling, as it's called. They can actually radiate out particles. A electron hole pair is created out of nothing right at the edge of the black hole. Part of it falls into the, one of the, the particles falls into the black hole, the other escapes to affinity, and the one that fell in had negative energy, so it takes energy away from the black hole, so the black hole radiates. Everything all around us is full of so-called virtual particles, pairs of electrons and positrons that come out of nothing and then return to nothing. But in the presence of a black hole, one of the particles can have negative energy. So let's say the positron has negative energy and falls into the black hole, and now the electron has positive energy. It's liberated and it can escape to infinity. And the net effect of this is that the black hole is giving up radiation. It's as if the electron had escaped from the black hole. So this is Hawking's theory of how black holes can lose mass. And a very interesting question has come up over the last 30 or 40 years about whether information can escape from a black hole as well. Because normally we say information can only go at the speed of light. Light can't escape from a black hole, so information can't escape from a black hole. That's the usual picture of black holes. But maybe, just maybe, because of some funky quantum mechanical effect, these electrons and positrons that are escaping from the black hole, maybe they contain somehow the information about what's been going on inside the black hole and how the black hole is made in the first place. And so, what are the different th theories that, that, uh, uh, that are contrasting with each other? So, um, right now there's a theory in string theory called the firewall, uh, which basically says, man, if something falls into a black hole, that's bad news, but we really believe that information is never lost. So the firewall is this thing made out of fire, mm -hmm. like a wall, right outside the horizon of the black hole that prevents anything from falling in and thereby keeps the information outside of the black hole. So that's one way you could actually... And preserves the, 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 the concept of uh, that information can't, can't be lost. That's right. This comes from string theory, because string theorists believe very fervently that information is never lost, for reasons I won't go into. You asked that. Right? <laughs> so another possibility is, well, another possibility is the information falls in the black hole, and then that's it. This is what Bill Unruh says. He says, it's gone, it goes away, it never comes out, suck it up, right? <laughs> That's another possibility. A third possibility is due to a phenomenon related to what's called teleportation, um, that the information about what's falling into the hole can actually escape in the Hawking radiation. Um, now, teleportation is something from Star Trek, where you know you dematerialize Kirk over here and you rematerialize him over there. and. Uh, in fact, teleportation is a reality, at least at the level of individual quantum particles. Um, and uh, the way that you do tele teleportation in quantum mechanics is, let's uh, say you create something like an electron hole pair over here. They have some kind of like funky quantum correlation called entanglement, which is a natural state of them. And then you want to teleport something from over here. What you do is you say, you take, say, this electron over here, you make a measurement on it together with half of the electron hole pair, let's say the positron, and then you send the results of that measurement over here, and that allows someone who's interacting with this electron to reconstitute the real information, yeah. sort of like freeze-dried, reconstitute it. And this is something that works, and people have been demonstrating quantum teleportation now for decades, or like a decade and a half at least. So one way that you could escape from the black hole is a variation of teleportation. Now teleportation on its own won't work. Actually, you're in good shape, right, because you have these 
electron-positron pairs, say electron escaping through an infinity, positron falling in, if you could just make a measurement with the stuff that's inside the hole, with this positron over here, and send the information out, by God, you could escape. But of course, you can't send the information out. That's the problem. <laughs> that's why they're black holes. That's why they're called black. So, but what if, what if, when you made this measurement, by some freak quantum accident, the measurement always gave the same result? Now, if a measurement always gives the same result, you don't have to send the result outside the black hole because there's no reason. It always gives the same result. So if the measurement always gives the same result, if, if the singularity of the black hole does what's so-called a projection, it forces your positron together with the electron you're trying to help escape, it forces them onto some state, always the same state, then by gum, this electron that's now outside of the hole is the same as the electron that's inside the hole. So this is a mechanism called the horowitz maldacena mechanism. John Preskill and I have done a lot of work on it. This also seems to be a way that information can escape from black holes. And what would be the significance of that if it were true? Well, it would mean that at least in principle, you could dive into a black hole and make it out. At the moment, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs>